Yo, what's going on everyone? Anime Games Online here, and today I'm reviewing Saint Seiya Soldier Soul. This is a game for the PS4, PS3, and PC through Steam, and it first caught my attention about a month or two ago. I'll talk about what I like and dislike about the game, so if there's something I haven't covered and that you're wondering about, feel free to ask me in the comments section below. So, the first thing I really liked was the story mode movies. I've only watched the first three episodes of the anime and decided I wanted to see how it felt to experience the story through a game to see if it was easy to understand for someone who isn't a fan. And the answer is yeah, I did. I think developer Dimps did a fantastic job telling the Saint Seiya story. I'm not sure how closely it matches the anime, but I felt like it was enough for me to understand what Saint Seiya is all about. It's an interesting story. There are four chapters. Um, the Sanctuary, Asgard, Poseidon, and Hades chapter. It took me about two hours of actual gameplay to beat each arc. Saint Seiya Soldier Soul is a fighting game, so basically what would happen is a story cutscene movie would play, and then there would be a battle, and the cycle would repeat. The scenes were to tell the story, and the gameplay aspects were to fill the fighting parts. So the fighting part is what took about two hours for each chapter, and the movie part was about one to one and a half hours for each chapter. So in total, it'll probably take you about eight hours to finish the story mode if you skipped all the movie parts and 12 to 13 hours if you watch them all. That playtime will actually be extended if you play the separate mode focusing on the gold scene characters called Battle of Gold. It's like an extension of story mode that has its own set of movie cutscenes. I skipped all of those movie cutscenes, so I'm not sure how long they are, but I completed the main part of the mode in about two hours. The second thing I liked were the Big Bang attacks. These are gorgeous cinematic ultimate special moves that deal a heck lot of damage to the enemy. They are hard to pull off, but it kind of makes them more satisfying when they do successfully hit. The third thing I liked are chaining combos. The process here is similar to Naruto Storm, where when you start a combo, you can do a dash and then continue that combo. There is a limit to how many times combos can be chained, since the dashing mechanism uses up energy called Cosmos, which is equivalent to Chakra in Naruto Storm. But when you have the Cosmos to do it, then it's pure fun to do so. The fourth thing I liked were the special and burst attack. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, other than the button combinations, because they both take Cosmos to launch, have their own unique animations for every character, and do a fair amount of damage, and can actually be done at the end of a combo to add extra damage to the opponent. Each of the 72 playable characters have two special attacks and two burst attacks. The fifth thing I liked was tournament mode. If you have two controllers, up to eight people can participate locally, so you can have any number of human and CPU players. For example, one human player and seven CPU or up to eight friends can play on the same PS4. In tournament mode, on the PS4 at least, there is a commentator and his voice comes through the PS4 controller speakers which adds some excitement to the battles. I don't think uh, the voice feature will be in the PC and the PS3 versions but I'm sure the tournament mode will be exactly the same otherwise. The sixth thing I liked are the graphics. The graphics are amazing. Way way better than the anime in every regard. The anime was made in the 1980s so it's really dated. The 1080p 60 frames per second of the game is a million times better than the low resolution of the anime. Same thing with the sound. I feel like this game is far superior sound wise. The music is great and provides just the right feel for the characters and atmosphere. I'm not sure if they're using the original voice actors. They may or may not be, but I felt like the voices that were in this game, they were spot on. I got the European version of the game and it had the Japanese voices and then a choice of English, French, and Spanish subtitles. The American version will have options for Spanish and Portuguese voice acting in addition to the Japanese because of how popular the series is in Latin America. The last thing I wanted to mention that I liked was online. It's nothing groundbreaking, but you can play with up to four friends. Saint Sia is a one vs one fighting game, so while two people are fighting, the other two spectate in player matches. You can skip rounds if you want, or if a friend takes too long to confirm they want to fight, the game will automatically skip to the next fighter to minimize the waiting period. There is also Ranked. It's pretty much the same as any Bandai Namco game. You either create a session or join another session and then 
fight for points. And there's a leaderboard that shows, I think, the top 50,000 um, players in the world and in different countries. All right, now for what I disliked. First and foremost is the Cosmos gauge. When you do burst dashes, which are like chakra dashes from Naruto Storm, to chain your combos, it takes up Cosmos. Special attacks take up Cosmos, so do burst attacks. If you land combos on the opponent or receive damage, your Cosmo will slowly increase. We can charge up our Cosmos by holding L2, but the fact the gauge is so small makes it so you have to charge up often. At least I ended up charging a lot. The second thing I disliked is a result of the small Cosmos bar. It's a maneuver called the light speed move, which is a dodge mechanism you can use when somebody's about to land an attack on you. Essentially, it's the Saint Seiya equivalent to Snap Vanishing in Dragon Ball Z Universe or a Substitution Jutsu in Naruto Storm. Both of those games had their own dedicated gauge and they would refill on their own relatively quickly so you could use them even after they were exhausted. In Saint Seiya, you can only use the light speed maneuver 3, 4, maybe 5 times max in an actual fight, realistically speaking. Because not only is it limited by your Cosmos, but each time you use a light speed move, it requires twice the amount of Cosmos as the time before it. Since the Cosmos bar is already small, or at least I feel that way, you're pretty much screwed if you accidentally burn one. I felt like they overgoverned this move in this game, because in Naruto Storm 4 and Xenoverse, this type of move was made so it wasn't abused, but never did it feel like it was annoyingly limited like it does in this game. Using the light speed move also didn't feel as smooth as using the equivalent moves in Naruto and Dragon Ball. I guess I'm comparing different game franchises here, but such a comparison is necessary since not all ways of pulling off this move can be deemed fun, as in this case. The third thing I disliked was the low amount of money earned and the high cost to unlock things. Most of the characters will be unlocked just by beating the story mode, so those are easy unlocks. I want to say about 60 some of the 72 playable characters can be unlocked just by playing naturally but for the rest of the characters and the dozens of costumes that need to be purchased in order to be unlocked those take about 1 million points just to unlock them for the fights i finished perfectly i earned no more than 2900 points most fights i didn't went perfectly and in those i got around a thousand points to put it in perspective at 1,000 points per victory, I'd have to win 1,000 fights. Even if I won perfectly, that's still a few hundred. And that's just for the characters. We have to unlock about 38 of the 40 stages. And then there's a whole bunch of other things to unlock that aren't as essential, but they might add to the fun factor of the game. Like, uh, for example, this thing called assist phrases, which are basically uh, quotes for characters from the game that pretty much boost attributes like they give you more HP or they raise your attack power. And just so you know, online assist phrases are optional. You can either use a custom battle where those assist phrases are equipped or you can play a normal battle where, where you can play with the characters in their uh, base state. So overall, based on my experience and all the things that I like and dislike, for my review, I give Saint Seiya Soldier Soul a 7 out of 10. It's a really fun game, but some of the features in it really hold it back from what it could have been. For Saint Seiya fans though, I think this is the best game in the franchise. So many characters and costumes and the complete story, I think this is the perfect game for the Saint Seiya fan. For people who aren't fans or aren't fans yet like me, this is still a really good game, it's really fun. But there are better alternatives like Dragon Ball Xenoverse or the upcoming Naruto Storm 4. What do you guys think of the game? If you've played it or if you're thinking about getting it, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.